Now, if you're looking for one of the most affordable options when it comes to swapping out your radiator, this Mishimoto OE style replacement radiator will be the one you need to check out for your 2007 to 2018 JK Wrangler. Now, there are a number of different reasons why you would want to do this swap, including better or more efficient cooling, or your current radiator is cracking, leaking, or ultimately failing on you. Now, this will be a great way to do some extra maintenance on your rig without having to break the bank with a Mopar option or a high performance option. Now, we'll also be a direct fit, taking all of the question out of the install and will require no modification in order to get this in. Now, the RAD will meet all OEM specifications, giving you some peace of mind there, including OEM spec plastic end tanks and an aluminum core for proper cooling for your 3.8 liter or 3.6 liter. Not to mention, this will come with the Mishimoto Signature Lifetime Warranty, making it all the more worthwhile. Now again, this will save you a couple bucks compared to other choices on the page at roughly $200. Now what I will say is just like any other OE style part, this is gonna be very simple and to the point without all the extra bells and whistles that some of the more expensive choices may have. Now a lot of pricey options will be more for performance applications. If you're doing a lot of wheeling or your cooling system is really tested with constant use at high temperatures. Now some may be a bit bigger than this choice, which will require some extra modification that you may not want to do. Now I think if you're daily driving your Wrangler or even off-roading it and you're looking for an affordable yet reliable rad, then this is going to be a great pick. Now install is gonna be a three out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter just because it is pretty lengthy and it's a little bit more in depth than the average install, taking you about three hours to get the job done. Now, speaking of the install, one of our customers here has installed this on their JK and is going to walk you through that process step by step. So that wraps it up for me. Let's go ahead and get into the install. This is the tool for the repair we had today. A pair of adjustable locking pliers, 90 degree pick, quarter inch driver, three inch, three eighths driver, seven millimeter deep socket, eight millimeter deep socket, 10 millimeter deep socket, 10 inch extension, 10 millimeter wrench and an eight millimeter wrench. They're just on the same wrench, on the same wrench. Electric ratchet, impact driver, three eighths, quarter inch ratchet, and the knife. And this was all we needed today to swap this radiator. And the funnel. And the funnel, that was to fill it up. Yeah, that's it. Right, and here you see we've got a large tray to catch as much of this cooling as possible. The drain that caught on these radiators is in the front little corner right here you have to use a pair of pliers or maybe you can get lucky with your fingers break it free there we are drain pan in place you can thread it all the way out or slowly either way whatever you decide to do have your drain pan in place you can go ahead and take your radiator cap off as well up the flow of coolant. Come out. Make sure it's not hot when you go to taking the radiator cap off or starting draining this. Make sure everything is cool. You do not want hot coolant on you. At this point, we're playing a waiting game for the coolant to drain. I guess, but it's slowing down. That can't be all the coolant. Worth noting that my heater core has gone out recently and drained a lot of the coolant out of this system. Although that seems like not enough coolant. Next step, take off the lower radiator hose as well. That'll help you drain coolant more effectively. All of these, Clamps are held together with these eight millimeter worm style clamps. This is the upper hose I'm looking at here. We'll start back here to the lower hose. All right, so from the radiator from the top, there is your lower hose. And he's going in there to get that clamp off. All that was was an eight millimeter socket and a long extension. I clamp. Could be that or a constant torque clamp either way 
access is limited. Might help and aid to take this air filter box out of the way. If it is a constant torque clamp, get some pliers down there, this air filter housing out would be a great benefit. All right, so I decided to go ahead and remove this air intake here just to make it easier to access everything and to show you guys what's going on as well. All these are eight millimeter worm style clamps as well. Still the same tool. You get lucky and you'll be able to break it free with your hand, pull it off at the same time. Have that out the way. You can leave that connector connected, it won't do any harm. There are four clips holding this air filter housing in. Two here, one there, and one right in front of the uh, snorkel. Take this line off, put it out the way where no debris can fall into it. Raise up. Now's a good time to inspect your air filter. Make sure it's good to go. Is that good service? Now there are. Holding this in place. Yeah, just pops in. Those three tabs pop in those three rubber grommets. So there's your removed air intake. So now you can see the hose. Here's the bottom hose going into the radiator and that clamp that was removed. Now it's not as lower of a radiator hose as you would normally expect. It's about midway up, but some inclination as to whether or not we have all the coolant out of the system. You can see a lot more coolant now. Before I forget, one good safety measure any internal damage if you take that air snorkel off put something in the throttle body to prevent dirt getting inside of it from here we need to remove the overflow reservoir upper hose throw the fan shroud fan assembly so we're taking this upper radio hose off our case, we're replacing the hoses. You don't have to do this step necessarily, but you can just take that clamp free. We are removing the entire hose though, so take those two clamps loose. Now is a good time though, if you have never searched your thermostat, and always when you take these hoses off, never really thought about, but inspect them for airflow, coolant flow, just see if you can penetrate and get line of sight through them. But this one you can, you can actually see light travel through it at some point. Yeah, it'll let you know you have a good hose. We're replacing the hoses also with Mishimoto silicone hoses, and we're replacing the thermostat. This just slides into two slots, no bolts necessary, it's just that one hose that are routed throughout the top of the shroud and connected to the inlet. So all of that is removed. We're also installing a Mishimoto racing thermostat, which will go here just to kind of do everything at one time. But for the radiator, all you need to do is remove the two hoses and get rid of that overflow. From here, all it looks as is there's one connector going to the fan and it, for our sake, let's disconnect the fan. If you have any issues getting these off because they do sit in the front where a lot of airflow, they're about to stick the connector, you press this tab down right here on the gray portion of the connector. At any point, it just does not come off. Push forward a little bit, push that tab down, and slide it off. That helps unleash the rubber seal inside a little bit so you can get the connector off a little easier. Now you can leave the shroud on or off. In our case, we're just gonna pull it off as an assembly and swap this over to the new radiator on a bench. So from here, it just looks like there is 10 millimeter bolt here, 10 millimeter bolt here, and anything else I can tell, I think that is all. Now this is just a 10 millimeter socket. Take that 10 millimeter out. Close that one. If you don't have power tools, not everybody does. A simple ratchet and socket will work just fine. These aren't ridiculously tight. Do note that the grommets in these might fall out. These aren't. 
keep that in mind. Let's see. Let's do that. So we realize we have to remove the grill to get the radiator out. From this step, it's pretty simple. There are supposed to be six retaining clips. We only have four. We, we only have four. One here, 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 here as well. You can use a plastic trim removal tool, but for me, this pick works just fine. Just slide the centerpiece up, grab it, and they both pop out. Put them somewhere where you will not lose them because they are small and necessary. At least four are necessary. <laughs> At least four. <laughs> this one is different style, but same concept, just slide on the edge. Pick up, pull the body out. They do come apart, so make sure you have your pieces together. There's that. Now as far as the grill removal goes, those six clips on top, and there's also six actual clips that press in. Two are on each side of each, or on the back side of each marker light housing. Just one pop there. And then pop there. I guess the four center clips were already loose. Oh, very nice. Um, you can try to disconnect these connectors, but these do not look easy, or take the easy route, just disconnect them as a whole. It also gives you a chance to inspect your bulbs, make sure there's no damage, lights are not burned out. That way, and grills up and up. And that is that. Next step is to remove your four bulbs retaining your condenser package to the cooler. Um, you may or may not have this. This is the aftermarket transmission cooler. Uh, you may have it if you do, you know, if you don't, it just stays along with the condenser. There's four eight, eight millimeter bolts that are cut away. One in this corner, one in this corner. Same here and right there as well. You don't have the access to get them out with power tools, so These are rubber, not metal uh, airflow deflectors. They help channel air to the radiator directly. They are mounted here as well as to the radiator themselves. So I clip them from the subframe, the radiator support. So I made a discovery. Uh, that these four supports are zip ties, in fact, that go to the core of the radiator itself. So we have to remove the fan and shroud in order to access those clips in order to get the entire package out. That is what's holding us back right now. As far as the radiator fan goes, there are, there appears to be two bolts. Wheel. They're eight millimeters each. So there are three clips holding this flash shield in, just like the uh, air deflectors on the side of the front of the radio support. They're Christmas tree clips, so. You can fight them a little bit. That's one. Two. Now's a good time to inspect blades. Make sure no chipping, cracking, because this is plastic, so everything looks good. Bearing still fine. Go to the pipe.
From here you can see four pins. All right, so these particular clips that are holding that cooler to the radiator are not reusable. They're not threaded or anything of the sort. So what we've had to do is just kind of figure out a way to cut the back clamp off of these so they can be removed. Uh, of course, you can see the one right above the one he's working on where it's kind of damaged those fins for the heat, uh, heat shield there, but this is a radiator we're not gonna be reusing. And uh, we don't have any of these style mounts. And again, this may not, most likely is not on your radiator at all. Unless you've had that, uh, that transmission line cooler there mounted on front, you won't run into this, but we're gonna use zip ties to remount that cooler to the new radiator. And he's literally just using a knife to cut the backside off of these. You can see the front. First I was, the first time was not as forgiving, but the second time we got the method figured out a little better. So these are the clips, retaining clips that still remain. They're like Christmas tree style connectors that just go through backside compressors to it. And you may even have something else connecting your, if you have a cooler, connecting it on yours. You just want to get that cooler removed before getting this radiator out. There's one more clip. Let's see one more. There's another one found right here. Another Christmas tree connector. For this harness. Just move that. And you might be able to get your radio out. Trying to watch out for the Freon lines over here on this side. We've also got coolant lines coming off of that aftermarket transmission cooler that you may or may not have to, to worry about. It's going to be very difficult to see since we have a power steering line tucked in as well as cooler lines, but on the uh, lower shroud, it looks like lower shield. It's a clip. Uh, I can show you on this radiator. On the new one, this clip goes into this lower portion right here. It's tucked away, the shield comes up and clips in right there, so they get that out as well. That's the bottom side of the radiator. That clip right there is what I was just fighting with. Just a little bit of coolant to drain out. We need to compare this one to the new one. You can see this one was beginning to leak a little bit. Corners, there's some saturation. Could be from the transmission line coolers, but the saturation there as well as in this corner, so definitely worth noting. You want to hold the two up side by side and so this will be our first look at the two together to see how they line up. Man, it looks pretty dead home. Size wise looks good if you check the top inlet hose you can see on the new one with the clips. Very similar, if not identical setup to the old one there. Here's the other side. I mean, everything really appears to be identical, doesn't it? One thing to note, the uh, big issue with 
aftermarket cores is the uh, eight or four thickness. This one is absolutely identical factory thickness, which is a big, big plus, big benefit. You got the same coolant capacity. You don't have to worry about losing any of your uh, fluid engine off, going off floating and whatnot. This one is a uh, checks out. Should we attack the rubber? Attach the rubber housings to it before we put it in? Oh yeah, no, no, we gotta talk everything. The swap. Oops. These arms, they are a D shape insert. The legs only going one way so they don't spin in place. Really like that. Is that just the mount for it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a isolator. Keeps from vibrations. So that slides okay. directly over. For the record, the pants were not stained before the radiator install. <laughs> God. <laughs> a little bit more coolant there. Yeah, a little bit more. These are fresh stains. These. Is that the right side? No. I pulled out. Yeah. There we go. That's right. Flip right on. It's upside down, it's a thing. Oops. Right on. You can see how those will line back up. Literally just so those perfect. Clips and all exactly right. Alright, everything swapped over. Got the air shields on. Two of our sliders. I'm just gonna set this back in. As smoothly as before. I wouldn't have defined removing it smooth, so yeah. hopefully more smooth. Hopefully more smooth. Pretty pretty removal. Pretty good, pretty good. We know where the clips are now. This is true. And you guys get the benefit of us learning it and showing it. Isolators, the radiator itself, or uh, almost see it. There we go. See it there. See it there. Everything's in. Now just reverse. I'm gonna start with this clip because it is the most complicated to get to. Removal. Pro tip: you can get to it right here. Does angle. Go directly in front of the fender well, and it's straight access to that clip right there. So that's the one that we had problems with. And I'm willing to bet the same thing to the other side. Yep, that clip. Right. Now, just to give the radiator some support, put one of these to move the back into place. Just hand tighten it. Considering kidnapping a dog from my neighbors right now, I had to shut it up two or three times already. Pro tip, remove all dogs from the neighborhood before you remove the radiator. Very professional tip. So there's that. All right, so again, this saw, uh, this may not apply to you at all. If you don't have one of these, uh, these aftermarket transmission cooling units, um, then you will not have had that on the front. But we had removed those uh, Christmas tree style clips and those can't be reused and we don't have anything like that. So what we've decided to do 
is go with just some uh, zip ties here. He's putting one going in, one going out, so we can zip them together. And where those original Christmas tree mounts were, there are some little isolator kind of rubber mounts there. So we're using that same, those same locations to do this. And we're just running them through the fans on both sides. And we'll run them through the fans of that cooling unit and then strap them down to hold it in place. So <clears throat> there will be four of these all together that he's working on putting in now. There's the first two completed. And again, there's that unit that we'll then run them through there. And we'll shove that strap down in just a second. All right, so we got all four of those installed. And just if you're doing that, just slide that cooler right back on where it was. And you may can get those same connectors somewhere if you know ahead of time. I think our zip tie system here is gonna work just fine. And it's actually a little less obtrusive to the, to the current units there, so. But again, if you didn't have that unit, you wouldn't have to worry about any of that at all. Next step, we're gonna reinsert these clips holding this uh, air deflector back on both sides. From there, we're gonna put these eight millimeter retaining bolts back in for the uh, condenser package that mounts to the radiator itself. And again, go in the four corners here, here, there, there. And for the looks of it, everything lines up just as it should, perfectly. You just got to uh, finagle your system a little bit to make the holes line up. But, because uh, the weight difference is, is there. Everything else is uh, going pretty smooth. These don't have to be tremendously tight snug where the condenser does not move freely and there's no gap but you can see overhead here ever so slightly that bolt goes in right there plate for right there you would see there'd be a gap between the two there's no gap there whereas over here you can still see the gap present between the two once it's everything's tight the gap closes up to about that if there's no gap, you're good to go. Don't over tighten it because this is plastic and it will break. As a side note, we ended up removing the zip ties. Some of these zip ties. We prematurely secured the uh, aftermarket cooler. Okay. Uh, if you're dealing with a cooler like we are, would suggest just kind of, we've got two zip ties connected right now just to kind of keep it in place, but it gives us enough play for him to reline the bolts to reconnect the radiator. I highly recommend starting all these bolts by hand. Since like I said before, they are screws and their holes are plastic threads. Make sure you have them started prior to putting a wrench on them. Ensure that you're not cross threading anything. Snug there. Tightening these bolts down would help making sure things align, but one of the issues remaining is that this shield does move independently because it's not a hard metal shield, so the bracket itself with the condenser has to line up to that shield, that hole, and then go into the threaded portion of the 
the radiator itself, so there is that issue. That issue we're running into a little bit right now. So you've got the radiator and all lined up. It's that shield in between the two that's... Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And this poses the biggest problem right now. Would it help if I was pushing the screw from the front side while you're moving the shield? Yes, there it is. There's that. So we're going to tighten these and then redo our zip tie process from before. Same way as we did it before, just again, we used one to hold that in place while he did this. So now we're going to go back through and put the other three into place on this exterior transmission coolant unit which in most cases you won't have again on your regular at all. So we've just replaced the zip ties that were originally there. So you got hit back mounted. So now we were doing the fan. Um, keep in mind, if you do have one of these aftermarket coolers, your supports that go through the radiator tend to damage the fins. You're gonna to have to separate them a little bit, but the fins are just for airflow. The actual coolant passengers are the, uh, are the flat portion to go horizontal. Like this slide right in. Um, go there. Got two little screws up there. Here. We are there. And the three clips on the bottom side, can't forget about those. Just those Christmas tree stock clips. One. Two. these just reconnect the connector put the seats put in place this one this connector does have a christmas tree uh style clip that goes on the radar support right here as well helps locate the harness let me come around yeah was disconnected initially but that right there just press it in that's like that and that's where that was. now we're gonna put the reservoir on that you bolt down all the way which we gotta do that now Not too tight, just, just making contact with everything. Everything's good, secured. So now, radiator hoses, reinstall the intake, go back on. All right, so the last thing we did was put in fan shroud, reconnect fan, um, 
Now we are, since we are replacing our radiator hoses, we're going to include that as part of this. This is an eight millimeter worm gear clamp. Ratchet work fine. I just get power tools. So is that simple, straightforward? Now we have these. It's a Mishimoto. They silicone superior grade hoses and black colored hose clamps. Good time. Ordered these from Extreme Terrain as well. That is upper. I have to put the hose clamps to where all the bolts are facing. Same way. Getting perfectly on that radiator. And that is how much. Okay, Alright, so as I was saying before, little hose, because of the access, have your screw facing the front of the engine be easier. Have this screw facing the side so you can come down from the top and get the plan. Put that on there. Both slide on. Perfect. Keep in mind you have to twist it a little bit to so it doesn't rub the frame right there or that harness. Make sure your clearance is good. Check the alignment. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. So these are seven millimeter bolts. bolts. Not too tight. Might be reasonable to consider replacing the hoses with the radiator. Now we're putting the reservoir back on. Now's a good time to clean it if you already have it. We cleaned ours not too long ago, actually. All it is is these two square pieces just clip into the band shroud. Like so. And then just route your hose. Through and over to there. Adjust accordingly. Just like something like that. Should be good to go from there. For this, we have a Red Rock cold air intake for this engine. Not the factory one. Decided to put this on while we were here. Really upgrade some things. It's a pretty straightforward swap. All you have to do is change that sensor to this or boot adapter for the bottle body. Make sure you have your line connected to that port. This air box has a symbol already installed, but it's not the easiest. So we're just gonna leave it there, but you get the idea. It's a new air box. So that's in there. It would actually be a lot easier replacing the stock. Because you just put the box in the tube back for the stock and don't have to replace that sensor. Put that hose back on exactly the same, sensor clip in exactly the same. So it's really just a different box and filter. Also available with Extreme Terrain. This is the Red Rock cold air intake kit we're installing. All of these are eight millimeter clamps. So tools are pretty on par with come from the factory. Make sure you are seated on the throttle body. You can feel the metal lip is. It's 
split the difference between that and those. Same thing with this hose. You can feel, you can actually see where the lip is on this. You split the difference on it as well. And with the factory, you just have the one clamp, right? Mm -hmm. Case it's right there. And it's good tight. Last but not least, air filter. So this filter box is kind of a tight fit. Just put your clamp where you can easily get to it. And that is the intake install. Now we have to do the grill and this radiator swap is all but filling it and complete. So for us, we did not remove the connectors or disconnect the lights. We just removed the bulb assemblies all together just so we didn't have to fight the connectors. They weren't being very cooperative. Turn everything up. either attach the two harnesses back or reinstall the two bulbs, just depending on what option you chose. Aligning the clamps on the bottom. They just push right back into spot. Don't forget about the ones behind each of these lights. They just snaps right back in place. And don't forget where you put your clips from earlier. That was when they are needed. For our sake, there's six, there six clamp clips. We only had four. So I'm sure you could buy those at the hardware store if you wanted to get the other ones replaced. Now all we have to do is fill it, and that is it. Brand new radiator sits exactly like the stock one did. Really, that's as close to stock as I think. I mean, everything lined up perfectly. No real issues at all. And the old cap fits the new radiator. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Now we're just adding the coolant to this. I always go back with 50-50 mix. Pretty diluted coolant, which is what we have here. And make sure you buy the coolant that matches your system. For me, it was the yellow. That was a very good point. You can buy that anywhere. We're thinking this takes about two gallons? Um, roughly. We're doing a completely emptied system. We did a heater core swap as well and a thermostat replacement. So every portion of the cooling system that holds coolant minus the actual engine block was drained and replaced. So we swapped out funnels to something that's a little more better fit for the neck because what you want to do here, we're about to start it. You got as much coolant as you can have in the radiator and we'll set the closed cooling system. And uh, we'll fill this funnel up, start it, let it start bubbling, gurgling, burp all the air out of it. And uh, hopefully by then all the air will be out and the swap will be complete. Okay, bump girl. Okay. Blew it in and the air out. Oh, bro. 
drop down here? Hmm? I don't drop down. So, uh, yeah. At any point, if you think you have an air pocket, squeeze your upper radiator hose and burp any air out of it. So you can see the level is maintaining right here at the top of the neck. At some point, thermostat housing will open, or the thermostat will open, coolant level will drop as coolant rushes into the engine. What happens is, engine heats up the coolant, makes its way through the radiator, gets cooled, goes to the thermostat, thermostat opens, allowing cool coolant to go to the engine. So we're waiting until that happens to put more in. Mm -hmm. Here, it's just a waiting game, and uh, that's really about it. Coolant level didn't drop any, or not much at all, really. So now we're just gonna top off the coolant reservoir, or the overflow reservoir here. Um, from here, just top it off until there's a minimum and maximum mark. You wanna go up until the max mark on this side, next to the AC lines, go to that point. And from there, you're good to go. There we go. You guys can hear, everything's working right, no leaks. We have put a piece of cardboard down the bottom to measure for anything. If we're on dirt, that's our best way of checking for leaks. Here, it's on the plastic cover that goes over the radiator. By the way. Yeah. Ah, there we go. And all it is, these four plastic clips go into the uh, fan shroud. So that's gonna wrap it up for my review and the install of the Mishimoto OE style replacement radiator fitting all 2007 to 2018 JK Wranglers. For more videos and products just like this, remember to always keep it right here at extremeterrain.com.